Welcome to another show on ATM TV Duty. Today we have a great show for you. We have Ken Fry and Sherry Mitchell. Ken Fry wrote an excellent book called The Lazarus Succession, and Sherry, <coughs> Sherry wrote a book called Desire. And we'll be back with you in just a minute.
Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, how you doing, Ken? I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Glad you can make it. Everybody, it's Ken Fry with the Lazarus Session. Uh, he has multiple books. This is no, uh, or should I say, latest book coming out. Uh, um, you know what? I, I will start off with that. For some reason, that was just interesting. But even in my writing here, I need to ask this: What, what exactly? What was the first book you published? Uh, the first book I published uh, was a book called uh, That was about a man who was dying, and he had a considerable number of secrets uh, which he'd hidden from his children, and he was now regretting that particular state of mind. So he, uh, as he dies, he sets them. Uh, little clues about where to find certain things uh, which begin to reveal his life to them which they never knew uh, and he has a very deep secret which it reveals itself at the end of the book that was the first book I ever wrote huh. well, that does sound like it'd be a great read yes yes it does now what caused you to get involved in to bring uh, the spiritual aspect into your mystery with the Lazarus succession. Right. Uh, I was always, well, I've always been interested in uh, uh, spiritual or religious matters, uh, whether they're a Buddhist, Hindu, Christian, or whatever. Um, and for some reason or other, uh, I was looking for a story, something to write. And I looked at miracles and I took on the theme about Lazarus. And from that, I adopted the story where Christ raises Lazarus from the dead. Um, Lazarus walks out in his winding clothes, and this artist uh, picks up the bandages and paints his last painting ever, and wraps his painting in the bandages, which he uh, then hides away. And they're not found for centuries. Um, and from that arises various miracles. So that's how it began. Okay, well, that was a good start, obviously. it's. Uh... An excellent book, and uh, in in the beginning you have uh, Eula and Brody working together. Um, oh right, yeah. <laughs> and, and they were Brody, yeah. They were um, uh, a research team which made TV productions, and uh, they had a track record of finding strange things and strange objects, and uh, they get contracted to, to try and locate this particular painting believed to have miraculous powers, and uh, that's how the story begins. Well, yes, and, and they in the book they make a very good team. Sure. And uh, um, I don't think it's time to get to the ending of that yet, but they don't, uh, they don't last uh, like you think they will. No, it's a, it's a very enigmatic type of ending. Um, it, kind of left itself in, in the area where I thought there could be a follow-on from this, although that wasn't intended at the time. Uh, but as it, as it developed, it, that's how it appeared at the end. And I just felt that uh, uh, it, the ending was kind of sad in a way, but it wasn't sad. It, it was really quite, quite pleasant, but it left you inquiring what's going to happen next. Yeah? That, that's what I was thinking also. Are you going to follow up on this with another book like it? or a sequel to it? Well, not so much a sequel. I've got a, a new book coming out in August, which is called The Lazarus Continuum. And The Lazarus Continuum picks up where Brody has become a monk, and it picks up from there uh, 17 years later. Uh, and what's happening, and he doesn't realize he's got a daughter and, and so on, and the whole thing begins to unfold. There's not so much retrospective material in it, in it but uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, again, the miraculous thing appears about that painting. It keeps appearing and uh, it unfolds as it goes along. It's not quite the same as the succession, but the, the same element is in it. Okay. Are, are you familiar with the Ellis Peters uh, CAD file books? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> well, Ellis Peters wrote these books about a brother Cadfile uh, who was in the Crusades 
Right. And his after his experiences in the Crusades, he decides to come back and become a monk. Uh-huh. And he develops an herb garden, which he uses to heal people of different diseases. But he also goes out then and solves mysteries. Right. Sounds like my sort of book. <laughs> well, she wrote a number of them. They used to... They had some of the Brother Tad file on uh, Mystery Theater. Right. I mean, what, was he some sort of a Knight Templar or what? Excuse, I missed that question. Was he a, a Knight Templar or, or not? Oh, no, no. He was just, he fought in the Crusades on the English side. And then he came back and decided he wanted to become a monk at that point after the Crusades. Right. And then... Okay. It's, it's the whole book's about his adventures as a monk. I mean, the whole series is about his adventures as a monk. What was what was it? What was his name? What was the guy's name? Uh, oh, Brother Cadfile, C A D F A E L. Ah, right. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Thanks. That's uh, there, and you know what? Your book reminded me. Uh, I just happened to think of that as I was sitting here, but as I, I was going through your book, it was reminding me of a bunch of other things I'd read. Um, I, I mentioned Malachi Martin's works. That's right, yeah. Uh, he, you know, he, he was a Catholic priest, a good friend of Pope John Paul II, and an exorcist, and the author of 15 books. Well, his books had a, a range of... Uh, topics, but for instance, he wrote one called There is Still Love. Right. And he said, the light of the sun, or he said that God's love is like the light of the sun, and that man's love is like the light of the moon, a mere reflection of God's love. I understand, yes. And then he went to something in the Bible, as, as you did with Lazarus, but he said that uh, Jesus performed his first miracle at a wedding feast. That was to a show, change in mind, wasn't it? Yes. To show the sacredness of marriage. Right. And he said there's a meaning behind that miracle, which is that just when a couple thinks that all the wine of love is gone, that's when they can taste the sweetest wine of love. I understand. <laughs> yes. Which I found very interesting. But, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. I didn't, I, 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 I had never realized that, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, huh. okay. So we got the first and the last. Good story, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, you might be able to do something with that, too. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, that's, but it, it, like I said, it's a very interesting book. And uh, at first, when you, early on in the book, when... Uh, Brody and Eula are breaking into this place and right. they have to kill these two or the shoot the one guard and bandage the other one after they've knocked out the dogs with a type of anesthetic. Yeah. Uh, you don't expect it to go where it goes. <laughs> well, uh, what I found interesting was that uh, when they got into the, the guy's apartment, house, or fortress, whatever it was, uh, they found all these stolen works of art. And uh, um, I introduced that uh, missing Van Gogh painting, which was allegedly burnt in a fire. And of course, it wasn't well, in the story, it wasn't. It, this, yeah. <laughs> this, this man had purloined it and taken it back to South America, uh, which uh, Van Gogh was considered a decadent artist by Hitler. Uh, but of course, they collected him anyway. <laughs> this, this <laughs> it made me laugh. Yeah, uh, uh, and it's it's funny you should mention that. I there was a book I got recently of quotes and sayings, and uh, um, there was uh, trying to remember the man who did Citizen Kane. But anyway, his quote was that. Uh, Donny Osmond had Van Gogh's ear for music. 
Right. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Orson Welles said that. Yep. Yeah. You know, I will. I'm kind of curious because uh, on this is a good book, The Last Succession, and and it's it's uh, 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 I'm not sure to say analogy, but it's. Uh, it takes the place off of where he, uh, um, since he was the, the last miracle, right? Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, what about the, 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 the person who uh, uh, did the painting or painted what he saw? So he painted what he saw, uh, but then he swore he would never write, uh, uh, he was sorry, he would never paint again. So he concealed the, his painting in the windings of Lazarus and hid it away. And uh, that's the last it was heard of until actually the Crusades and then it was discovered. And mir miraculous powers were attached to it and that went on all the way through into the medieval times. Wow. Wow. Oh. The, uh, um, now, the, uh, 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 you know what I want you to do, tell us just a little bit more about that on the last session. Uh, 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 because it has a meaning. I know that it's supposed to be uh, uh, fiction, but it, it, it reminds me of the, um, uh, what is that movie called with, uh, oh my gosh. Who, what's, what's his name that did the money pit? Oh, uh, I, know, I know the film, but I don't know who did it. <laughs> uh, um, he was a comedian at, at one point in time. He also did a, I can't believe his name. Uh, uh, um, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks did this movie called uh, 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 a series, yeah. and similar. He had to find something that uh, 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 it was a painting, and it had to lead him towards something that was left. Uh, uh, um, oh my gosh! I cannot believe it. I can't believe I forgot it. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, this. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> don't, don't die. Well, well, go ahead. Tell us, just just open up. Tell us a little bit more about uh, uh, about Letter of Succession, because I'm going to look it up. Because I, I I'm hitting it on the nail, but I can't get it out. Uh, okay. That we call it the Teflon moment for 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 uh, uh, elders like myself. <laughs> okay. I mean, the whole thing about um, the Lazarus painting was that it, each painting was uh, destined only to last a short period of time or longer period of time, uh, depending on miraculous events around it. So um, in retrospect, you go back into the 1500s and there's a paint, there's an artist called Fran Francesco. Uh, he goes into the cathedral in um, Spain and there's a work, there's a work there on, on the wall, uh, the, a fresco, which is the raising of Lazarus. He's in a pretty sort of mystical state himself. And as he looks at the painting, the head of Christ seems to turn around and look at him and he faints and passes out. And eventually that mural, uh, our fresco painting, collapses. So he becomes the next artist of the Lazarus succession. And so it goes on through time. Um, so you get to the modern day when there's a woman who's a, a condesa in Spain, this is a noble family, and she in herself uh, is terminally ill. And she's heard rumors of this painting, and she sincerely believes that it will heal her. And she writes lots of books about miracles and strange events and whatever. Uh, so she sets um, this man, this lawyer called Frog Morton, uh, to track down somebody who can find where the painting might be. Throckmorton is a disgraced judge. Um, he's a crook. Uh, he's, he's, he was told to banish or disappear, which he did. Uh, so he gets a lot of money off her, and he finds Brody and Ulla, Ulla Stewart, uh, to discover the painting for him. Uh, but his intention is to steal it and make massive amounts of money from it. So that's how it develops. And uh, uh, nobody knows where the painting is, uh, even if it exists at all. Um, but there's a long lineage, and uh, there's a lot of research went into that to find out how 
uh, such things could occur, uh, they do find they do find it, and uh, um, it it disappears, it collapses in very miraculous and strange circumstances, and a new artist is then discovered. Um, I, I won't tell you any more because <laughs> it was a story for somebody. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> it's a, no, it's a, it is an excellent book. And uh, now, I know you've been compared to Dan Brown. Uh, what do you think of that? Well, I had two reactions. Was, oh, my, wow. <laughs> what are they talking about? Uh, but um, I don't know. I mean, there was no intention on my part to, to, to emulate Mr. Brown at all because. Um, is a superb storyteller, superb storyteller. Um, even if you don't like his style of writing, something about the way he tells the story is absolutely gripping, and you want to know what happens next or what happens after that. Um, that, to me, is the essence of a great story. Um, that's what he does, and the fact that somebody can compare me to that, I'm deeply flattered. Uh, but in no way do I see myself as good as Dan Brown, I'm sure. <laughs> What? Uh, uh, wait a minute, uh, I, I remember, I'm looking at it now, I was thinking about the, uh, 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 there's Inferno and then there's Da Vinci Code, and it, it had where it's fiction, but it, it did surround itself, itself with a lot of uh, 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 non-fiction attributes. Right. Okay, and that's the way your book had presented itself, which was very good because it's still, it was still captivating. Yeah. And, and especially, yeah. The, oh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was never sort of, uh, never even thought about it as I was writing. It just, just flowed out of me and uh, um, I hadn't got that in mind at all. No, no, no idea whatsoever. And when I started hearing these comparisons, I, I thought, oh, goodness me. Um, <laughs> This is beyond belief. <laughs> that day, I rushed home determined to start painting what I had witnessed. One week later, it was finished. It didn't feel like I was painting it. I was guided. Don't ask me how, I can't tell you. But I knew it possessed power of some sort. I was determined to preserve it. Wrapping it in the bandages from Lazarus's body, I hid it away in a sacred place. I wept as I swore never to paint another picture again.
The way it's written, it sounds almost like a passage in your book. And it, uh, uh, um, it started when it went to, uh, at the same time, he fixed Francisco with a withering stare. And then he came around and said, don't ever let me hear you say such things, son. There are mysteries in this world that only God knows of, or those with whom he chooses to share them with. That's pretty deep for, for a statement. That's more <laughs> like a passage. It's like a message. If you look at it, it in that reality retrospect in, in, in religion, that uh, uh, um, it's actually true. You know, there we don't know uh, 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 these other mysteries, but God knows. And then he, and it was funny, just like with Lazarus, just like with the painter, that you actually, God allows certain individuals to understand certain mysteries. It's kind of oh, yeah. interesting that you put it in your book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like he well, shares some, like I say, he shares, it's, it's like here, it says, there are mysteries in this world that only God knows of, or those with whom he chooses to share them with. That's right, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Well, uh, yes, um, it, 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 times, it, it kind of says that uh, there is a plan, uh, maybe yes. a plan in foot, but it has to be achieved by gentle manipulation. <laughs> I can't explain <laughs> any of that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow, this is very good, very good. It, it's, it's more than just entertaining. It actually, that's what's it, it uh, uh, um, it's positive thought provoking. I have to say it that way. Positive thought provoking. It gets you to think. It gets you to, oh, it opens your mind uh, uh, to certain concepts within, uh, 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 um, within Christianity, within, you know, uh, uh, Catholicism, uh, uh, within, it, it just opens up your mind. To me, that's what it did. It, it opened my mind to start wondering about certain things. That's why I said it was, it, it gets you uh, 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 captivated by like the movie I was talking about with Tom Hanks, The Da Vinci Code, that just kept going further and further because yeah. if you notice when it came out, people were start wondering and they started looking and researching. How about this? Your book, is it able to uh, 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 draw a researching interest? A research interest. Uh, yes, I, that's one of my big things. Uh, um, I can spend days on research, even into the min minutest detail, to make sure I get it right. Um, <laughs> get it Very right. good. There's somebody out there, some geek or some uh, clever guy, who will, say, who will announce to the world that I've made a mistake. You know, I, no. <laughs> 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 but no, I'm glad you said, you know, uh, the part that you had kept the way you said that it's a, uh, 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 it is fiction, but it does have a lot of realistic characteristics, but it also, the, the entertaining part of it, it, it has a little educational way where it would draw someone to want to research and go places and to, uh, uh, you know, to, to get a general idea, because even in the beginning of your book, you opened that stage. The moment you mentioned about Lazarus coming out and he's all half bandaged up. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> and then you ended off with, with the gentleman who's, you know, he's blessed to, uh, 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 he, he's going to be considered blessed to have the opportunity to paint what he saw. Yeah. So, so Christ, <laughs> Christ tells it, uh, the disciples try and stop him or prevent him, but Christ waves them away and, and yeah. allows him to help <laughs> This and the way he goes, you know, that's how it starts. Yes, and then from then on, you put it into uh, 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 in our world, uh, our timeline, to understand, uh, uh, to start grabbing certain characters. Like I said, gr grabbing certain characters and certain things that they say. Uh, they're like, it's, it's like I'm looking at a cue card. You know, something that's right in front of me and I'm reading certain, uh, uh, it's like I'm reading passages, but they're not passages. They're just a, uh, uh, it's incredible the way you did it. I, I thank you for that. Uh, uh, but it's a, a design, unique design. Did you, I, I know I'm going off the chart with this, 
But but did you uh, 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 when you was researching? Did you map out a certain outline when you did this book? Uh, no. <laughs> you just just started I'm not, writing. I'm not very good at that. Um, I tend to get I write very emotionally. Um, and I tend to sort of get an idea, and when I get that idea, it goes down. I sketch out the idea on paper. Uh, I don't know where it's going to go in the book. I have no idea at all. Uh, but I research all the details that I thought of. And, and from that, I pick up other clues uh, from where I can go with it. Um, but I've got structures. I've tried structural writing, and uh, I can't do it. I'm very, um, very sort of on the page. Uh, what comes next? What comes next? What comes next? Uh, there are writers who, who do it in sequence, and they know what they're doing. They're very clever guys, but I can't do that. Um, I just, mine comes out of the heart, and the brain sorts it out afterwards, and that, that, that's that's all I can say. <laughs> well, you did you did fantastic being a. I have to say it. It's just like you did do a sculpture and writing. Uh, I was very creative. Uh, you did a great job. I mean, it's just very talented. You're very talented. Very blessed. Uh, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Yes. Very good. Thank you. We're definitely glad to have you on the show. We want you to come back because you have multiple books to share with your viewers and readers. So we'd be honored to have you on the set again coming up soon. Um, also, uh, uh, if, are you still there, Ken? I'm here, yep. Okay. I just want to make sure because, yes, we do want you on the show again. Um, well Later and, today or, or another time. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you, thank you. And you're in the Philippines? No, I'm in the, the UK. In the UK? Yeah. Oh, in the UK. I was wondering because I was listening to the accent, then I, I was Hang thinking on. about Australia, Hang but the UK, let, beautiful, beautiful. Let, so uh, we hope everybody there will enjoy the show uh, 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 and uh, we'll see what we can do. In the meantime, I uh, would we'll let you go, and um, we have to get to our second guest. And our second guest is um, uh, Sherry Mitchell uh, uh, with her book, Desire. So everybody, and, and thank you, Ken. We'll be right thank back you. after this. Thank you.
back. Welcome back. Yes, we have our guest with us today. Uh, uh, our second guest, her name is Sherry Mitchell, with our dynamic book called Desire. Yes, yes, <laughs> you heard it, heard it already, right? Yes, yes, Desire. And we have her right now, Sherry. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. And, and let everybody know, yes, you were on a plane just a while ago. <laughs> yes, uh, just uh, being a grand <laughs> 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 So were you going uh, from Australia to New Zealand or, or is the opposite direction? Um, Australia to New Zealand. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh, and, and it's early in the morning for you. Where's... Yes, it's 4 a.m. and about 2 degrees. <laughs> 2 degrees? Oh! <laughs> well, she, she's oh. down under. Yes. It's, it's their winter. <laughs> it's their winter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but we're, we're still facing, uh, for our summer, what are we doing from nine? We're bouncing from nine degrees back to seventy degrees or seventy-six degrees. Yeah, ninety degrees to seventy degrees and back and forth and a lot of rain. Yes. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, no, but but that's here. Michigan. That's yeah. how it is here. It's just it, it is what it is. But nobody's yeah. worried about anyone on this set melting. <laughs> 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 well, well, so let, let, let's dive right into it and tell us about your book, Desire. Okay, so desire is just, it's a kind of, I actually said it in New Zealand originally, and I thought, no, this is the kind of story that would fit in anywhere in the world, and sort of made it a little bit more generic, the location, and it's a story of a, of, of a woman who hasn't got over a past love, and she has the opportunity to get together again, there's miscommunications, there's misunderstandings, there's sex, there's romance, and yeah, it all comes together into a into a little easy reading kind of book with some interesting characters and a few twists and turns <laughs> and a happy ending. <laughs> wow. Incredible. <laughs> so, so, so now, did these characters you came up with uh, come from people you had met or talked to or... Did they just come right out of your head? Every single person, I, every single character is based on someone I know, I've met, I've seen in a restaurant or a cafe. There's always, I always pull, any character I write about is always based on a real person, but no one even knows who they are. <laughs> so I don't get sued. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Yeah, that's yes. interesting. Okay, I uh, I know a lot of books do base characters on real people. Um, there's one I'm rereading now where I heard the author on the radio talking about the fact that he said every event in the book he wrote actually took place, but he wrote it as a novel uh, because he changed some names to protect the innocent. Yes, or well, they're not so innocent. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, when you write a novel, then nobody can tell whether it's a real character or a fictional character, so you, you're off exactly. the Exactly. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is with fiction, a lot of real life things, it's like you couldn't have made it up anyway because, you know, real life thing. But I read somewhere, and it's so true, the th difference between writing fiction and nonfiction is that fiction has to make sense. <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> to a degree, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, one of the best fiction writers, and his name's not coming to me right now, that I ever read was a former FBI agent who worked in the Detroit area, and he oh, wrote what? books about criminals. Well, of course, that's what he knew, and yeah. and the, their interaction with FBI agents and police, and you know, so. It was fiction, but it was based on what he'd done all his life. Yeah, yeah. So he's pulling in all the, the true aspects, which really adds to a book, and that's what I always try to do. And, and you know, it is amazing the situations you come across in everyday life, and you think, okay, that would be really interesting just to work that into my writing. And, yeah, it's really fun. So, yeah, that's really what I did with Desire was weave all things that had happened, all people that I knew, and weave it all into the story. So... Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. That that will make it a little interesting. And uh, 
if one of those people reads a character saying something that he said in the past or she said in the past, they'll they'll know who the character is. Yes, yes, I've had people say that, Jim, that um, and some of my writing, someone might have written, um, excuse me, <clears throat> a friend might read it and they'll say, didn't we talk about this once? I'm like, oh, I can't remember. Who's <laughs> 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 <always> been vague. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, no, it was a fun little book to write. So, yeah. So, I know in, in the beginning of this book, the, the main character, and her name's escaping me right now, uh, is not finding the man she wants. In the end, she yes. does get him. But yes, because she's never really gotten over a man from her past, so that was the, the, whole, um, the whole concept of the story was, she hasn't really got on over them, and to meet up again and, and then realise they still have the same issues, which all came down to miscommunication, and then by the end of the book, finally work through through that and end up with a happy ever after for now. So, yeah. Yeah, well, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, <laughs> which is, once again, pretty much what life is like because everyone can say they've, they've found their happy ever after, but we, we all never know what's around the corner, so... Happy ever after for now seems to fit in, fit in best with real life, really. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> I'm glad it does. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, I, I know I've, I've, I've talked, for instance, uh, myself to, to some lovely women who... Uh, when I say one thing, what they hear is something totally different than what I meant. <laughs> yes. And then I don't get what you catch what they're saying in return. It's like, huh, what? Yeah, so that kind of miscommunication doesn't get you anywhere. No, no. And it's amazing how, happen, um, how often it happens. I watched a, a TV show the other day, and it was so interesting. And they had a, uh, a counsellor, a marriage counsellor, and he, she was asking the husband to say something to the wife and then the wife to repeat it back. And she repeated it back completely differently. So she didn't even hear what he was saying when he was speaking directly to her face. So, yeah, it happens all the time. And it does um, make for interesting things to write about because most people can relate to it on some level that they've tried to explain something and the person they're talking to hasn't understood, what you know, hasn't got their point, missed their point completely. So, yeah. It's pretty much real life. <laughs> Desire. What? Uh, 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 I don't know what to say. A dialect or, 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 or what? What a uh, uh, um, language. You know, I can't say the language. It had to be dialect. I mean, dialect because it's pretty because, good. Yeah. Now, yeah. That's understandable to me. I, 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 except for one that was I was mm -hmm. I was laughing about because you meant you used the word hiss when um. <laughs> They were they were talking and said something about the garden and and uh, uh, I, I guess it was um, I can't call her Alice. Uh, um, let me go back here. She told she she said that he was having an affair. Yeah, her yeah. husband was having an affair. And and the way she said it, she hissed. Yeah. Hissed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that was good. I love it. Oh, okay, so that was something that we would 
that we would use quite regularly here to say, it, it kind of brings up the connotation of a cat in a bad mood. You know how the cats, they will spit and hiss, and it kind of, if you're talking about, it would usually would apply it to a woman. So if she was really angry, she would hiss where she spoke, or she would have a hissy fit, <laughs> which means completely going off the deep end. Um, yeah, so you imagine a really angry cat. <laughs> yes, but actually, that's that's right. That's uh, and then that was that's readable. All of us can understand. So we are in that same uh, uh, barrier together. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, interesting. See, I, I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, I just assumed that you know, his is everybody. Would, <laughs> everyone would talk like that. But yeah, it's just interesting that. Yeah, how it changes the dialect. Yeah. Yes, that's what I was wondering, because the dialect, if the dialect changed or how much did it change. Uh, uh, um, did you add all three type dialects together to create this book? Yes, yeah, so when um, I wrote it, because I did write it originally based in New Zealand, and then I thought, no, it's going to be for um, you know a wider market. And I did remove a lot of local phrases from the um, from the. Um, conversations in the book because I thought no one outside of my own country is going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Interesting. And, and that's what New Zealand, does it have more of a, a Spanish type accent? <laughs> or, I'm not sure because I, I noticed you're using quite a bit in the book. And, and, oh, okay. And, and, and then it also uh, uh, use it. New Zealand, you using are you using the a uh, uh, British language as well? Yeah. The yeah. dialect, I should say language, dialect. I should say it that way, dialect. And then you yeah. have, uh, uh, you know, I know ours is all over the map. I mean, just crazy, but <laughs> like you say, our our language is the world of its own, which is true. It, it <laughs> yeah, is. yeah, yeah. You know, uh, uh, um, I'm speaking to the two of you. To me, the way you you both <laughs> talk is so completely. Different, even though yeah. you're from the same place, I assume. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if both of you are from different states or different parts of America, but your accents and, and way of talking to me sound very, very different from each other. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. As a matter of fact, when we traveled, like uh, 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 Bob and I had the military, so we've, we've traveled around, around the world and we noticed uh, our language. It, it actually, the American language does become alienated from everybody else's. Yeah. <laughs> it is different, yes. Well, I mean, yeah. when, when this country was settled in, in the 1600s, uh, or when not, not settled, but when the, when the British brought over the settlers here, uh, yeah. they all spoke the same language. But as they moved to different parts of the countries, the language developed differently. And, you know, that, that can happen anywhere. Yeah. I, I, for a minute there, I saw Bob, he, his head went towards me like, like, settler. I'm like a settler. I think some people say we were boated. Alright. the boat, how, you know, how yeah. we came. We weren't the settlers. <laughs> but we settled in.
basically all my life I've always loved writing and um, I was first published in the city newspaper when I was 10 years old so that gave me the um, inspiration to, to keep excellent. going. So yeah. I understand you have so, of the books out too, is that, is, is that correct? Or is, um, it, or yes, is it the only I've one? Got a, I've got a, I've got a few. Um, this one, I, this um, desire is through the little French media, but I have also self-published a few books, and um, I'm working on a saga at the moment. So yeah, always got a little project on the go. <laughs> yeah, Mar Marco from the little French media, he's, he's a great guy, part of the team. Yeah. As a matter yeah. of fact, he helped us try to connect with you on the set just a while ago. Yeah. So it was beautiful. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. So that was good. We, we managed to get over those little wee hiccups and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and finally, um, uh, uh, what, 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 uh, 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 can, can you uh, uh, give us a little about, to your readers, to your readers, your viewers and readers, what can you, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, something that you can give them, you know, to, to get, strike some more interest into the book Desire? Um, I think anyone reading it, if they like reading a love story that they know is going to happy, have, a, have a happy ending, but there's going to be twists and turns and some unexpected um, occurrences along the way, then, yeah, in, in a book that they feel like they can relate to the characters, then, yeah, Desire is the book for them. <laughs> Very good. I, I was looking for relating to the characters. Relating to the characters, it gives it more realistic, uh, uh, yes. more of the nonfiction, even though it's fiction with actual less disclosure of the non-disclosure of, <laughs> <laughs> or should say non-disclosure of a disclosure uh, yeah. of the characters in the book. So yeah. I hope <laughs> over there in New Zealand that when uh, uh, your viewers and readers uh, uh, see the show, I know they're going to be probably knocking on your door, or calling you up, asking about, uh, uh, you know, who's in the book. Excuse me, yes. So it was it me? <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to say? Oh, you know what? Plus, we'd love to have you come back on the show as well sometime soon. Oh, awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And do you have anything to, uh, oh, Bob? Well, I was just going to ask what you did. Do you, do you have anything to add to that? Me, sorry. <laughs> yes, you. Yeah. Um, no, just thank you for the opportunity to chat. And um, yeah, great. It was great to have a chance to talk about the book and, and to talk to, to you guys. Well, thank <laughs> you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, and, and that was uh, Terry Mitchell of, of the book, a woman's book called Desire. Um, uh, thank you, Sherry. And, and uh, we want you to get some rest because it's like, it's probably around 4.30 or almost yeah. 5 o'clock in the morning uh, uh, this time of yes. your night, our afternoon. Yeah. Okay, everybody, uh, we'd like to thank you for watching, watching the show for the, today, and we're looking forward to seeing you again. That's what I'm talking about. See you next week. There's a place inside my mind unseen Dreams of you and I that just can't be But I can keep them safe and locked away inside In a perfect world where I control it Give me your heart there and I would hold it But I know that just can't be reality But please Don't you wake my daydream Cause it's so real it seems Maybe someday I'll pick my head Daydream. If you said to jump, then I will do it. 
Right into the fire and walk straight through it And if you knew I bet that's just what you would say I guess the only thing for me to do is Never let you know just how I'm feeling Cause I don't want to know if you don't feel the same It's a shame Don't you wake my daydream Cause it's so real it seems Maybe someday I'll get my head from the clouds But for now I'll just daydream Don't you wake my daydream 